Melchizedek's priest. Don't look, don't look at this, the scripture too much. We're going to get out of here real quick. Don't even get nervous. It's a bunch of more hit putters in there. I just couldn't take nothing out. I was like, ah, I did this much about, but praise the Lord, I got here. Based on something. Amen. But with man, it's, it's just based on how they think. Yeah. 
He gonna go, he gonna go wrong that way. Because he said he knows, but it's short time. Let's go to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Pick it up in verse 28. This is Jesus. He's walking about. We're going to see something here. Go ahead. When he was coming to the other side into the country of the Gergesenes, there met him too possessed with devils. So you ever see some people outside and talking to themselves? And you're like, man, what's wrong with them people? Hey. This, this, that's what happens a lot of times. You get your spirits on. We see it in the movies and we think, oh man, that's just in the movie. Nah. You can be possessed. And I'm going to show you how this happens to you. How do, how do the angels enter into you? And it's all mental. But I'm going to show you how, Lord willing, before we get through this, how this all takes place and how, we go, how this go about. So Jesus, he said, when Jesus was come to the other side of the country, the Gergesene, that made him too possessed with devils. Well, go ahead. Coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. So we would say they just lost their mind. Because this is they ain't in their right state of mind. But they got they got doubles on them. This this is what happened to them. We're gonna find out how how this happened to people. And and what the path they took for this to happen. So that we don't even fall uh, victim to that. But go ahead. And behold, they cried out, saying, what have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? See, they knew what was going on. They knew what's happening. Because I said, like I said before, they had the lake of fire. That's what that was prepared for the devil. But it's going to be many people pouring in there. It ain't just the angels pouring in there. A lot of people are pouring in there. Because they don't understand this and how to save themselves. But go ahead, verse 30. And there was a good way off from them and heard of many swine feeding. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer for us to go away into the herd of swine. See, they wanted, they wanted, they wanted to leave. They said, Hey, if you cast us out from this these men, let us go, let us go on there. And how they enter into it, they enter into your mind. I'm going to show you how that happened. But go ahead. And he said unto them, Go. And when they would come out, they went into the herd of swine. And behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the water. Go ahead. And they that kept them fled and went their ways into the city and told everything and what was befallen to the possessor of the devil. That's exactly what happened. Their mind was gone. Then they got into the swine and they might go. But go ahead. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, they besought him. That he would depart out of their coast. So, he said, so once they said, hey, but they started to see what's going on. Let's go, let's go, let's go to Romans 6. So you would wonder, like, how do you get in that position? How do your mind stay get like that? Romans 6, we're going to read one verse there. 16, going to tell it all. Go ahead. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves service to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. See, that's telling you who you, how, to, how do you start on that path. This is how you get to the place right there. Because once you start walking, you either walk with the Lord or you walk with the devil. See, the most of the world think there's an in-between. Most people think, well, you know, I can just, I'm going to try to do a little right here, a little, no, no. It's either you're walking with the Lord or you're walking with the devil. And you're going to know which one you're walking with just by here. Say, no, you're not to whom you use your service to serve you obey. So if you're doing practices that the devil put together, guess what? You, you're with the devil. Most people think in the world Christmas is good, right? They don't think it's that bad. Right. They serve the devil and don't even know it. Because right. that's who they obey it to. Go ahead, finish that. Whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. And see, that's what men go wrong because it's always about them not wanting to be obedient. That's why when you tell people what, what they shouldn't do, they don't want to hear it. Right. Right. 
You have to get your check, your body check, and put it on the subjection at all costs. But if you ain't been taught and you don't know that, hey, it's gonna be you gonna be in trouble. And this is the problem that, that most of the world has because they don't want to be obedient to God. But this I here started the beginning. Let's go to the beginning. Let's go to Genesis four. This, have everybody heard this story before? This is the very beginning. Four people on the earth. Adam and Eve and their two sons, Cain and Abel. But we're going to find something out right here. Genesis 4. We're going to pick it up in verse 1. Genesis 4 and verse 1. Go ahead. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was the keeper of the sheep, but Cain was the tiller of the ground. Okay, you got four, you got four people on the earth. Go ahead. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground and offered them unto the Lord, and Abel. He also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fact thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Go ahead. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wrong, and his countenance failed. See, if you're doing what you're supposed to do, you ain't gonna never have no problem or something. But obviously, he's got something else going on in his mind. See, Abel gave his best. Cain did. So we got something going on in his mind. We're trying to figure out what's, what's the problem with his mindset. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wrong? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin life at the door. And unto these shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. See, so he's telling you that, because we all just read about your members, right? Whose service you are. So, Obviously, this is showing you, giving you an example of what's going on as far as putting it to light about dealing with the Lord, right? He had first hand dealing with God, right? But he didn't want to do that. He said, hey, something else is going on because, hey, if you ain't giving your best, what's the problem? Right. Who he listening to, right? He's who he served. And we're going to see who he served all the way down the line. He told him if you do good, you're going to be accepted. But if not, hey, something, yeah, hey, something going on. But go ahead. He came talking to him with his brother. And it came to pass, when, when they were in the field, they came rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. See? So we know who he listening to, right? Because they know you ain't supposed to kill. That's part of the commandments of God. But you see right now who he's listening to because he rose up and killed his brother. Envious because he didn't want to do what was right. Jealousy. So he decided to kill him. But then we know who he listened to, right? Go ahead. Where you at? Now. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. So you see, he didn't kill him, and then told me he didn't know him. So he right there. He, he's, walk, he's walking. He decided between the two, I want to walk with the devil. And see, the Lord allow you to do whatever you want to do. He's not forcing nobody to do nothing. That's why you can't tell none of your family members anything. They were like, no, nah, I ain't doing it. And if the Lord ain't forcing nobody, you can't force nobody to do nothing. Do right. The scripture tells you to save yourself from this untoward generation. You have to do that. You got to want it. That's why Jesus said he's standing at the door and not. He's at the door all the time, but you got to go over it. He's not kicking the door down. He ain't doing none of that. He's not doing any of that. That's why when, he, when many of his disciples left from him, Jesus looked at his 12 and said, y'all don't need to. But they were smart enough to say, hey, you got the keys to eternal life. Where we going to go? What? He gave him that choice. He wasn't like, please don't leave because I lost everybody. That's how the world will be. Everybody left. Don't, don't go. No. <laughs> You would turn around, y'all. You ready? You want to go too? <laughs> <laughs> because it's up to you to want to get it. But I want to 
way people are going to get it is people who want to walk with God. You got to walk with them. Cain, obviously, we see he was walking lied, killed his brother, they lied on him, and said he didn't know where he was at. So he, he, we already see the path that he's on. Wait a minute. Go ahead. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which has opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto you, unto thee her, her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. Go ahead. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. See, you got to understand when you entertain these angels, you open doors. Yep. And people don't understand that. You start opening up certain doors, you got to deal with stuff. If you look at all these angels out here, and we go, you can read, if I can put so much scripture in here, we'll be here forever. <laughs> but... You're going to read, they got angels to do specific jobs. And you got to be mindful of that. If you commit adultery, you got an angel for that. And if you've been listening to them or you did that before, that angel stay on you. And you got to deal with him to the rest of your life. They stay there. And you open those doors. Just like you've opened up the doors for God, you open those doors for these evil angels. You open it up. So if you start by stealing, guess what? Now you got to deal with him. Because yeah. see, everybody don't have that same problem with these spirits. These spirits ain't on everybody like that. But they get on you for how you operate. So if you decide to be a murderer like he did, guess what? Now you got to deal with this. So you're going to always have that thought of killing people on your mind. Because you open that door to deal with that particular angel like that. So now you, for the rest of your life, you got to deal with that. That's why when you deal with people who kill people, if you know people like that, you'll be like, I'll be looking over my shoulder all the time. Yeah, you're going to have to because you decided to entertain that angel. Because we said, we read where you, whoever used your service, your members of service, serve the other, right? So when you open those doors, that's the stuff you have to deal with. And then you put on more and more. That's how they get on you. Then you have legions on you. Because you open up the door for one evil angel, and then another one get on you, and another one get on you, and another one get on you, and guess what? You lost your mind. Because you decided to entertain that. So you don't want to go down that road. Because see, this is what happened with gang. They say, hey, they're going to try to kill me now, right? Because you're the murderer. Oh, the Lord said, yeah, I got a perfect angel for you. You want to be a killer? He's perfect. He can show you how to kill. Like I say, kill, kill, and kill. And so now you're dealing with that. So when you do those things, you got to be mindful of the stuff you do because you start entertaining, and this is what happens. Go ahead, finish that. What verse you at? 15. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. Yeah. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any find him to kill him. Mm -hmm. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the, on the east of Eden. See, that's, that's what happens. So you don't want to get the, open these doors because you end up running into that problem. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 1. Ezekiel Let's get some characteristics of these angels. Ezekiel chapter 1 and pick it up at verse 1. 1 and 1. When you get that, go ahead, bro. Now it came to pass in the 13th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captains by the river of Kabar, that the heavens were open and I saw visions of God. So this is dealing with doing Nebuchadnezzar came and, see, and, and, and sacked Jerusalem. So this is what, and he took out all the, all the wise people with him. It's around the same time with Daniel. But go ahead. In the fifth day of the month, which was the 15th year of King Jehoiakim's captivity, the word of the Lord came expressly, expressly unto Ezekiel, the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Kabar. And the hand of the Lord was there upon him. So I like to say this, you know, you know, it said, do it. it said, verse 2, 
say in the fifth month in which the king was the Jehoiachim captivity. I used to say, I, I like to say he was the last king, even though Zedekiah was. But I always say Jehoiachim because Zedekiah was a puppet. Because at that point, they were just under the rulership of Nebuchadnezzar. They was under Nebuchadnezzar on what they should do and not do. But he wasn't the puppet, but he got taken into captivity. But go ahead. And I looked and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud, and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures, as this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man, and every one had four faces. So they got four faces. So they got one spot. So much for the man face in the head and just the wings on there. Now they had four faces. One of them is a man. You don't read that. But it's one head with four faces on. Go ahead. And every one had four wings. And their feet were straight feet. And the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. See, this is what you do. You, when you go on the war, you, you, you make sure you know who your enemy is, right? You get prepared for that. But go ahead. And they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four faces. And they and they four had their faces in their wings. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went. They went every one straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion. Mm -hmm on the right side, and they four had the face of an ox on the left, on the left side, they four also had the face of an eagle. Thus were their faces, and their wings were stretched upward. Two wings of every one were joined one to another, and two covered their bodies. So you hear people talking about, yeah, I saw an angel. Now they can change themselves, but they ain't see them in this form. Because mm -hmm. you, you, you ignore if you see them in this form. Be scared. Go ahead. And they went, every one straight forward, where the spirit was to go. They went. Yeah, because when you got faces all around, they don't, that's not practical like we do. We only got one, so you got to turn around and go from one spot. You got to be able to see. But if you got heads all over your body, you just moving like this. Because you, they all over. So this is how they, this is, this is how, this is how they are. Go ahead. And they turned not when they went. They, they went. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire, and like the appearance of lamps. It went up and down among the living creatures, and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. So they move moving about. This is what they do. They're moving back and forth. But you now you can get some understanding of what they look like and what their characteristics are. Let's go further. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. You might want to put a mark in there. We're going to be bouncing around real quick now. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6 and 10. Go ahead. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. See, that's what we have to do. You got to put that armor on. Go ahead. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wisdom. This is high place. So he's letting you know what's going on. He said, you're not, you're not wrestling with your, you think, you think when you deal with your brothers and sisters, you arguing and you yelling at that, it's bigger than that. And he's letting you know, hey, it ain't just that. That's why you have to always keep that in mind. Even when you're dealing with your brothers and sisters, what's going on, what's behind the scene? Because they pulling the strings. Because a lot of times, people you deal with, you ain't got no too much problem with them because you ain't dealing with nobody that's crazy around you. Most people you know. So you got to understand and look at that. That's why we got to get past that. Once you start to, whatever you go through, 
whatever argument or situation you go through, you should be able to get past it because it, most of the time it's not that serious. But when pride kick in, that's how everything all starts. Feelings get hurt, and, and now it's about something else. It ain't even got nothing to do with what you got a problem with. So you got to understand this and keep this in mind. This is what you're doing with it. He said, verse 2, he said, but we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against physical power, the power of the rules of darkness of this world, against spiritual witnesses of high places. This is what's going on. So every time you get into any type of confrontation, you want to keep this in mind. This should come in your mind. Every time you go through something, think about that. So that you can get past what's going on. But go ahead. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Yes, sir. Go ahead. That's it? Okay, let's go. Let's go to, let's go to Luke. Keep, keep a mark. Let's go to Luke, chapter 4. Lord going to show you how, what you're supposed to use and how you can recognize the devil and even how you can deal with it. And what you should do to get him to fight him up off you. Luke 4, verse 1. Luke 4 and 1. Go ahead. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Go ahead. Being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days he, he did nothing. And when they were ended, he <coughs> was afterward hung. So he was in the wilderness. He was fasting 40 days. And he didn't eat nothing. And afterward he hung. Watch what the devil do. Now notice this spiritual stuff behind the scenes. Notice what Jesus did. Jesus was hungry, right? Mm -hmm. So this is what the devil going to use. Notice people want to... If can Satan put thoughts in my head and he put stuff on me? No. Everything he gets you on is what you already got in there. And this is what's going on. Because he know, he know what's on your mind. He read what's on your mind. So he was hungry. Verse 3. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command the stone that it be made bread. See, he gets you on the things that you want. He know how to get you. So he said, hey, you're hungry. Hey, man, this is you, the son of God. Make these stones become bread. But what Jesus, how Jesus deal with it? Go ahead. And Jesus answered him, saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. See, he knows, he knows, he knows the thing of law. Even though he wrote it, but he knows it. <laughs> so you got to make sure you gird yourself up. You need to know it. Because without you knowing this, you ain't got no arm on it. That's how you get your arm and knowing these statutes and commandments of God and walking with them. We seen that how you, whoever you walk with, right? Mm -hmm. So if you don't know no better, you might walk the wrong way. I remember when it wasn't no GPS, you can get you can get lost, lost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now the youth, they, they can get anywhere. But before that, hey, you had to know where you were going. But you got to understand and know this book. Because, hey, behind the scenes, he can take you wherever you, you want to take you. And if you don't know which way to turn, you're going to be in trouble. But Jesus told him, he said, he said, Jesus said in verse 4, It is written that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's how man's supposed to live. But go ahead. What did the devil do after that? And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. So he told him that. But then we did with Melchizedek, mm -hmm. king of priests and Salem. Yeah. So he knew what that was. He said, oh, yeah, you're you going to be king. <laughs> so guess what? Put that out there. Hey, I can make you king. He knew that, right? Go ahead. And the devil said unto him, all this power would I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will give thee. See? And see how that he got the power. That's why you wonder when we read in Gershon with those brothers, they was possessed with devils, right? You wonder why they was acting crazy, cutting themselves and doing things of that nature? Because you didn't lost, you, you decided that your members wanted to walk that way. Then you just, that's who you with. <coughs> they end up taking over you because you desire to listen to them. That's what you walk in that way. So if that's the way you want to walk, so be it. And this is what happened. So he tried to get Jesus to walk up by giving him some things that he 
he, he go become or what he wanted. The Lord, he wasn't dealing with that. But he, he had that power. He got that power because you chose to walk with him. You chose to serve him, so you say, hey, this is what I want to do. This is what this is. I'd rather listen to you instead. So the Lord said, okay. Here it is. This is how you start entertaining these angels. But go ahead. Seven. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. And him only shalt thou serve. See? Mm -hmm. He's told you, hey, this is why he's taking back. Mm -hmm. No, I'm worshiping the Lord. And only him. So we got to keep that in mind. You know, you got to gird yourself up. Let's go to Matthew 16. Matthew chapter 16. Pick it up at verse 21. 16 and 21. So you got to be mindful because this is what the spiritual stuff going on in your mind. Go ahead. 16 21. Go ahead. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. So he's letting them know, hey, this is, this is what's written. This is what needs to be done. This is the will of God. Because, you know, he's Jesus' son of God, so he, he's walking that way. He serves members to the Lord. But watch what happened with Peter, though. Verse 22. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Sometimes the things go on might not be pleasant to what you think. That's why I tell people all the time, make sure you, when you're looking at a situation, you're looking at the big overall picture. Because you're looking at just where you at right now, you all, you're always going to get into some stuff. You gotta look beyond that. You get into an argument or whatever going on, you gotta look beyond that. Is that person always like this? Do they always treat you like that? No, oh, there must be something else. But if you caught up in that moment, that's gonna get you. It gets you every time. You got Peter right here, you caught up in the moment. But you're not caught up in the big picture. We don't always look at the big picture. We always dealing with it in the moment. And then you end up forget about it anyway. Get into the argument and be done with that. And what was arguing? I don't even remember no more. <laughs> it ain't about nothing. But, but you got to make sure you look at the big picture. This person trying to do harm to me. Do they, do they always talk to me? Do they do it like this? And you start looking at them. No, they really don't. There must be something. Must, there's an argument number to misunderstand. Maybe something we just missed. We didn't get. Oh, okay. I got it. But we don't look at things like that. So this is why we end up having these problems. And this is what happened with Peter. He said, then Peter, because he said he had to die, right? The third day, be raised. He rebuked him, saying, what? Be it far from thee, Lord. This shall not be unto thee. Okay, it sound good, right? Like that. Yeah, I would walk with the Lord. I don't want him to die either, right? right. But you got to do to be about the will. You got to be about what's important. You have to understand what's important and deal with it now. He, so he said, so Peter took him and said, Lord, verse 22, saying, Peter, follow me, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Verse 23. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. See, man, you be ready to fight, right? Like, man, what you call me the devil? <laughs> what? <laughs> but he had to let him know you on a different page. You on some something else that got in your mind. And and not you not dealing with what's written in the book. You going somewhere else. So the Lord recognized that and told him, hey man, you, you, you this straight you say, I know you that. So he told him, get behind me, say. I know us one day, we might want to swing on somebody. somebody said, <laughs> but if you keep it in perspective on what's going on and understand what's going on behind the scene, it's what you're speaking of. And what you're speaking of, he try, you trying, he trying to kill the whole creation. People mm -hmm. don't know that. He just think, oh, I just don't want you to die, Lord. No, you're trying to kill everybody. Mm -hmm. But he don't see that. And even though he didn't see that, the Lord let him know even though you, you can't see it, because, you know, just like children can't see if they run, three-year-old can't see what's going to happen when they run out in the street, right? right. But you still got to tell them, hey, don't do that, or whoop their butt till they get it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, they don't understand that, but they understand that rock. So don't believe it like that till they're smart enough to get it. So he called them, say, to let them know what was going on. 
But he turned and said, verse 20, but he turned and said, so get me behind you, Satan. Go ahead, finish that. Thou art an offense unto me. Yes, sir. For thou favorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of me. See? And this is the, this is stuff you have to put in perspective when you're going through stuff. This is what happened. Let's keep it moving. Let's go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter 5. We're going to read one verse. First Peter 5. Now here's Peter, who he called the devil. Let's see what he's saying when he's preaching right here. Teach it. First Peter 5 and verse 8. Read that. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. See, he's letting you know that. Because, hey, that's what was happening to him. He's saying, man, you gotta, he was ready to get now. He was like, hey, you got to be mindful of what's going on. Because he's walking about trying to destroy everything. So he wants you to have that same mindset. He, he got that. Let's go to Luke 22. Then you know where that spirit is coming from. 
Because they want you to just sit back, oh, you, he done it all for you, you're going to be all right. You head it to the slot. That's what's happening to you. And it's unfortunate, but that's what's going on. So you got to make sure you be mindful of that. Because you got to be able to battle your way through this thing. We all got evil thoughts that go on our head, but we open them doors, so we got to deal with it from day to day. Just keep fighting. Let's go to Revelation 12. Let's see how he got knocked down to be able to get Cain and, 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 and get him to ride with him. This is what happened. Revelation 12. And pick it up in verse 7. Revelation 12 and 7. Go ahead. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. So they all fight. They fight in heaven, right? It was hell in heaven at this time. But go ahead. And prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. So they lost the war up there, right? Go ahead. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. What did he do? He deceived the whole world. He deceived the whole world. <coughs> Because they don't know they're in the battle. They don't understand how they operate. They don't know it's a spiritual battle. Every fight we think we do when the average man thinks he just contended with somebody, he don't think it's nothing else but that person they one on one. It's, it's beyond that. You know how you know it's beyond that? Just have a little traffic, you know. Say you put your signal on and you try and you get over. Look how they act. They're ready. They're ready to pull a pistol out on them. Yeah. Throw a finger up, cuss them up. Dude, it's not that serious. It ain't that serious. But you know how I get that serious? Because the devil's behind the scene. It's, they, if you got a 1 to 10 scale, they should be on like 1 or 2. <laughs> you got to put it on. I'm sorry. No, they're ready to go crazy on How do you get from them all the way up there? Because I didn't put a signal on. Why are we in this state? It don't make sense. But when you understand the spiritual replication behind it, you know what's going on. I just look at him and smile. I already know what I'm dealing with. And I just tell him, I'm sorry, mother. They be ready to go crazy. For what? Why are why you bent out of shape like that? But then we know what's behind the scenes, then you know what it is. That's why they have, they have all that road rage. You see people out boxing, shooting people and everything over an accident. But that's what happens with the hand scene. So this is the devil. He said, verse 9, he said, the great job of casting the whole serpent and the devil and Satan would deceive the whole world. He was what? He was cast out. Cast out. And that great verse 9. 3 9 again. And the great and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. And his angel will cast out with him. Then we read the beginning of woe. Because the devil is coming down unto you. So he's here. You know, so much for how he's supposed to be in the ground. ground. Now he's right here. Probably sitting right next to you right now. <laughs> and you got to deal with that. <laughs> Every time you have an evil thought of some stuff on the doors you already opened up. That's what you got to deal with. And it's, hey, it is what it is. So he's on this earth causing havoc all day long. That's what he's doing. Because they had more than heaven. He got kicked out of there. Michael got kicked out. He got to get a pot of here. So he on earth. That's what happened to Cain. He was on earth and he started talking to him. And that's why he killed his brother. Did he lie? That's, hey, that's all. You start opening them doors up and you see, he, hey, now you got to deal with murder. This is what happens if you go down that path. Let's go to Isaiah 14. He controls your mind. That's why you got most of the world controlled. We're going to see right here. Isaiah 14. 
gonna pick it up and we're gonna read two verses here. Isaiah 14, and pick it up in verse 12. Go ahead. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which then is weakened the nation? See, that's the devil right here. But he said, he, he, he said we read in 12 that he, hey, he, he, he got the whole world, right? So he weakened the nation. Go ahead. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. So what is he saying he want to do? You want to go to heaven, right? So what? It ain't just my name. What's it when you hear people say, my loved one died in heaven now? Where did that come from? It came from the devil. God never told you that. He told you from dust thou shalt so dust thou shalt so return. That's punishment. Never said that. But practically the whole world, that's how we know these scriptures are true. Because practically the whole world say, hey, when you die, you go to heaven. So we see who that's coming from, because he the one want to go there. He said, he said, verse 20, how about falling from the old heaven, old Lucifer? We saw how he fell, right? We read it where they had warned heaven, right? He got knocked down. Which he said, he said, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nation? For how I said thou, I will ascend up to heaven, and I will do what? I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation and the sides of the north. See, this is his, that's his agenda. And he put that agenda on to man. So man is speaking those same words. Let's go to Revelation 16. Revelation 22, I'm sorry. Read verse 16. 22 and 16. Go ahead. I, Jesus, have sent my name to testify unto you these things in the churches. See, he got his angels. He said, they minister spirit. He's sending them to go around. And they test, they doing all, testifying, doing all that. Go ahead. I am the root and the offspring, David, and the bright morning star. So the Lord telling you who it is, but he also showing you what they're doing. They moving around. Let's go see what they're doing. Let's go to Job, the first chapter. Let's go to Job the first chapter. And pick it up in verse 6. Job 1 and 6. Go ahead. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. See, Satan ain't just doing what he want to do, moving about how he want to move about. Nah, they all came together. And he said, and Satan came amongst them too, because they ministered the spirit. But then Jesus said, he sent forth his angels, right? So this is what's going on. <coughs> Verse 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, which cometh thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in So that's why you understand right now why you see a lot of killing, Lots of murder, why people are angry and all that. Because, hey, the, the devil did that. But they don't understand what's going on, so they operate in such a manner. They going through, they causing havoc through the whole earth. That's why you turn the news on, all you see is kill. Because, hey, hey the devil is it, right? That's why he told you in the beginning, whoa, right? So this world is operating like hell right now. It's not peace on this earth. Go ahead. Eight. And the Lord said unto Satan, As thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and, up, and, and upright man, one that feared God and eschewed evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God not? Now here's the situation with, hey, Job didn't even have that on his mind, but hey, the 
Lord can do what he want to do. So, here's a petition being put out here. Because the Lord told him, hey, what about Job? The Job was righteous and he hated evil. He hated it. So, Satan, he, hey, the Lord put it out there. So, Satan said this. He said, verse 9, he said, do, do the Lord, he said, Satan, Satan answered in the Lord and said, do Job fear thee for not? Go ahead. Has not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he had on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thy head now, and touch all that he had, and he will curse thee to thy face. So he told me, you know, hey, take all this stuff from me. And we got, we, we fought from that. You, you lose anything, now we be mad. <laughs> somebody step on your white shoe, your high gym shoe, you ready to swing on somebody. But we gotta have the right mindset because we gotta understand what's going on behind the scenes. So even if somebody did step on it, you already know what it is. Like you ain't even have to do that, but you know what? Whatever. You gotta be able to operate and understand what's going on so you're able to deal with these things behind the scenes, which is these spirits. And understand that. Because the Lord tell you, offense is gonna come. So that means you just gotta deal with it. But you got to make sure you operate properly in the spirit so that you're able to use that arm of God. So he told him, put forth thy hand, verse 11, now, and touch all he has, and he will curse thee out of faith. So you got to make sure, hey, hey, what's going on? Even if somebody walked up to you and kicked you, you're like, you should have a thought in your head like, man, why, why are you kicking you? And then say, hey, why don't the Lord allow him to kick Sometimes it may be some foolishness, sometimes maybe not, but sometimes you might need a kid. You don't know how to, Lord, Lord operate this thing, we need to understand that. So when you go through things, you need to, you need to understand why is it happening. You should have that mindset all the time when you go through things. Why is this happening to me? Why is it going everywhere? And then you be aware of what's going on, and you can check yourself. And make sure it ain't nothing you did. Job didn't do anything. But most of the time when you go through some things, it's because of you. Let's go further. Let's go over to the next chapter. Job 2. And we're going to read one verse there. Job 2. And now. So he told him he's going to curse it to his face. He just swear, but watch what happened right here. Job didn't do it, but watch what happened. Read that verse. Then said his wife unto him, Does thou still retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. See, ain't that what Satan said? That came from him. So we understand that. That's why when Jesus was going to die, Peter said, you're not going to die. He said, make it behind me, Satan. So we know this verb ain't the same words, right? That he told that Job was going to do, his wife did. Now keep in mind, people are like, man, she be messing up. And they got a crazy saying about Job's wife. You got to keep in mind, he lost everything. Lost all his kids, all his money. He was broke. He went from rich to broke. Most people go rich and broke, you know, people who have money, they end up hanging themselves. So he went from rich to nothing, and it was cool. And then, she didn't, she didn't break even then, lost all the kids. She only broke when, when he got hurt. She's like, oh, okay, so now you can take everything, now he's going to die. Because he had boys from the top of his crown to the bottom of his foot. She had enough then, and he's like, I can't even bet on him. But hey, Joe was like, Joe, Joe was ready for that, though. We're going to read that. Go ahead, keep reading that. From that. Yeah, go to verse 10. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speak. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? See, that's, that's showing you a man of God. Because people wonder, how much is it that John can withstand it? A lot of them like, man, I can't take none of that. I ain't going to get close to any of that. We wonder how did he get that knowledge and understand it like that? Because he didn't take everything in possession of himself. He knew everything he got came from God. And when you look at that mass, that mindset, then everything becomes easy. Right. Because he knew God gave it to you. Because we be thinking, oh, that's my children. Well, I got this house. No, you didn't do none of that. Mm -hmm. The Lord gave it to you. And if you had that, you have no problem. I used the analogy before. If you had $100 and you went outside, you'd probably lose your mind anyway. And you lost it outside, you'd be mad as hell. 
<laughs> you, be, you ready to knock something? Wait, wait, tear the house up. But if I gave everybody hundred dollars, you lost it. You ain't gonna tear your house up. You know why? Because you gonna be like, hey, somebody gave it to me. So if you have that same mindset about God gave it to you, you don't feel as bad. You have the right mindset. Amen. Let's go further. Let's go to Matthew Swift. Matthew chapter 12.
You can read how that goes on. You can read things like that and see what happened. You can read in Kings what you see that Ahab did and how he ended up dying. Because the things that's going on, hey, they, if you love something, you're going to want to because that's the service you want and you end up getting yourself in trouble. Which he loved a lot. So the Lord sent the angel to life. Can you read everything? He said, hey, hey, that's what you want? I'm going to give it to you. So you got to fight all that up. Let's go to Revelation chapter 12. Let's go back there. Revelation chapter 12. Pick it up at verse 10. 12 and 10. Go ahead. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. So that's the devil itself. And his minions as well. They cast down. Go ahead. Which accused them before our God day and night. See? They doing all that. You end up walking and listening to them. And what they do, they run back. See, Lord, see how I, I told you they went right. But that's what he did with Job. He told me, he's going to curse you to your face, right? They've been doing the same thing all from the beginning of the time. Since they go ahead and eat. You just got to make sure you don't fall acceptable to that. Because right. this is what they do. And then they go back and accuse. As soon as you, you do, and you know how it is, if you do something wrong, you feel bad. Right. You should. And this is about it. It'll pay you. Hey, you got to pay for it. Come right behind it's almost like you do something, you say it feels good, sin, sin, it ain't no sin like it feels, it ain't, it don't feel bad. Until you get the end outcome. And notice, once you do with the sin, then you start to feel bad. That's when Satan walk away. <laughs> like, yeah. When you was ready to go, he was all for you. Come on, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> and as, as soon as you do it, he walk, yeah. You go tell God, yeah, he was bogus. <laughs> bogus. But this is what happened. So you gotta keep in mind what's going on behind the scenes. They watch it. You read that, right? Let's move forward. Let's go to Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. Pick up the verse 14. Isaiah 14 and 14. Go ahead. This is my mindset. Go ahead. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Go ahead. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. So he tell him this is this is what's gonna happen. He wanted to go up there. He tell him this is gonna happen. And this is what will happen to you if you don't be mindful of them. Go ahead. To the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? That the shape him. Yeah, this is what I You control the whole world right now. That's why you got so much evil going on. Trying to depopulate the world, killing people, making up stuff, killing people. This is where we headed to. This is the world we live in. Forget about people trying to do stuff with the best. They've been killing you with the food. Putting stuff in there that you shouldn't be eating. You look up, look that up, and like, man, that's poison they put in there. Oh, it's just a little trace of it. It ain't gonna hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> look at look at some of the stuff they put in the bush crazy. But then when you understand the mission of the devil, he's trying to depopulize everybody. That's his mission, is destroy man. He's been doing it since the beginning of earth. So you can't be surprised when you see that. Can't even get a box of Cheerios without eating some poison. It's like crazy. <laughs> Don't make any sense. Look some of that stuff up. Thank the Lord for goop. Did you go to the store?
so back in the day, you had to. You just had to, you had to pray to the Lord. Now you can go. We still pray to the Lord. Don't get it, don't get it, get it twisted. That's right. But, you know, you can kind of do your due diligence too. Yes. Why are you in there? Because they may put some big swelling words in there. You're like, what? Right. Why y'all gotta do it like that? Because I'm trying to kill you. I work for the devil. <laughs> but that's life. Right. Let's go on with Matthew 25. Right. And read one verse 7. Matthew 25. Verse 41. Go ahead. This shall he say also unto them on the left hand, depart from me. So he's letting them know, hey, you didn't help your brothers. You didn't you didn't take care of your brothers and sisters. You didn't do what you're supposed to. This is the position you're going to be at right here. Like Lazarus and the rich man. Rich man just, he was, Lazarus was standing at his front door. He just kept stepping over. Didn't even try to help his brother. That's one example of the lake of fire they tell you about. You read that in Luke. Show you the only was what happened. He he got put the rich man got put in the lake of fire. The Lord's giving you an analogy about that. He got put in the lake of fire. Why? Because he didn't help his brother. Not that he spit on him, not that he kicked him, not that he, he didn't even touch him. He didn't even step on his shoes either. <laughs> <laughs> All he did was step aside and didn't help him. Got him put in the lake of fire. So these people got put onto the left side because they didn't do what they supposed to. He said, Then he said unto them in verse 41, on the left hand, what? Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. See, you can mess around and walk with the devil. But what happens when, when you walk with the devil, you're going to get the reward of the devil. And it was prepared for heaven, that lake of fire. So you decide to walk that way, that's what you want. That's your reward. That's what you've got to look for. Let's go to Hebrews 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Pick it up in verse 1. Hebrews 2 and 1. Go ahead. Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Go ahead. For if the word be spoken, for if the word spoken by angels was said fast, and every transgression and disobedience received the just recompense so of Lord, the Lord. Lord's Lord dealing with them. You read in Genesis, you see he got put up on the chains of darkness. He's dealing with that. We're going to go back and read some of that. So they got it coming. They're not slack. Nobody gets away. You all, we all get punished. Go ahead. How should we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with divers miracles, and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. Go ahead. For unto the angels has he not put in subjection the world to come whereof we speak. So yeah, he put them on subjection. Let's go read, let's go read some of that. What do you do? Let's go to Jude. Read verse 6. Jude 1 and 6. Right before Revelation. It's only one page, so people fly right past. If you got a new book like my brother, you're gonna be struggling. <laughs> Jude one and six. Go ahead. And the angels which kept not their first estate. So we read that in Revelation 12, right? When it was war in heaven, right? That's where they was at before. But what? But left their own habitation. So hey, 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 they got kicked out, right? Go ahead. He hath reserved the everlasting chains under darkness until the judgment of the great day. See, they got, they, they waiting for the last of the judgment. Let's go to Genesis 3. Genesis 3. This is all started from the beginning. 
Genesis 3 and verse 1. Go ahead. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, You should not eat of every tree of the garden? So we know who the serpent is, as we read that in Revelation 12, right? right? Go ahead. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You should not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Go ahead. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. See, you see what's going on behind the scene? Because she knows she wasn't supposed to speak with him, right? Mm -hmm. But notice what's going to happen right after this. Because he's going to get you on it. You've seen a, a few times, even with Jesus, how he got caught, how he was trying to catch Jesus up, right? What was on his mind? Let's see what's on her mind. Verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. So she thought, she was like, man, I be as God? Give me some of that. But obviously that must have been on her mind. So he put that out there. She rode around with it. Go ahead. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did. She told him, well, you know what? We learned. He listened to him. We got it. He was like, man, I needed some of that too. <laughs> Problem was, hey, you're supposed to get it from the Lord. So you decide to walk with him. This is what happens. Keep down verse 11. Go ahead. Seven. I'm sorry. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they they sewed big leaves together and made themselves eight. They got some bad information. Now skip down to 11. Go ahead. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Oh, say, hey, how you know you were naked? Who told you that? Go ahead. Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? So, hey, if you ate something, I ain't give you that. That ain't what I've been teaching you. Right. But go ahead. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. He threw up her butt real quick. <laughs> it's like, man, she feels so good. Hey, you, you brought her here. <laughs> But hey, you got to save yourself so that ain't going to burn. Because <laughs> I told you not to do it. You can't. That's what happens. See, you start operating with that mindset, that's what happens. Instead of just fessing up in the world, you got to fess up. Hey, I, hey, it's on me, man. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like that song, it's on me, baby. Right. You know? <laughs> it's on me. But we don't do that. First thing we try to do is pop and see if you wouldn't have did that, then maybe this wouldn't be not in that way. See, that's... Where we, who are we talking to? Right. Where are we getting this from? Right. Why do we come up with that mindset? Yeah. You did something wrong, just own up to it. Right. Trying to figure out how to get out of it. <laughs> Where do you get that from? Right. How are you operating? The scripture tells you to suffer yourself to be defrauded. So if you have an issue, hey, just, hey, it's on me, I'm sorry. Sometimes apologize, even if you didn't do nothing, it works. But like you get to argue, you know what? Nah, it's on me, man. Then you give them sometimes, you're like, you know, I'm tired of you saying it's on you, you know, because it ain't nothing. <laughs> but hey, that's the way you want to go. Because it ain't about nothing. So, verse 12 said, he said unto the man, he said, he said the woman who thou give it to me to be with, she gave me the tree, and I think I, I ate it. Verse 13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the servant beguiled me, and I did eat. They tricked her. But it tricked her on what she was with That was in her mind. I'm like, man, be God. It's God, you sound good. If you read some of the stuff, he popping in and out. Yeah. But hey, you got to get the right mindset, though. You can't be God and not have the right mind. Right. That's why you got to fill yourself up with the word. Just like with anything you're doing. I don't know why man thinks that because, you know, you're just supposed to be presto and get it. You don't presto nothing in this world. I'm like, I, I'm a electrician by trade. I can't do a heart transplant. This ain't gonna happen. And you ain't gonna happen. Just so you know, I, I'm gonna do, I deal with some type of voltage. I can get you back up. No! <laughs> <laughs> no, you ain't gonna hide none of that. You know, so why do you think you can't study to become God? You're not just gonna walk in and, Lord, here I am. You're on the wrong arm and so. You can't, you can't get it like that. You have to study and read. 
Fill yourself with this whole armor of God, which is this book. You got to get this in your soul. Then you have the right mindset to become God. That's what happens to you. When you listen to something else, you ain't going to become it. You ain't, it ain't going to happen. You got to walk the walk, which is practical when you think about it. Lord, it's simplicity. If you want to become God, you got to read the manual. <laughs> you got to study like you do everything else in this world. That's why there's going to be no excuses. People got three or four master's degrees and don't know. Look at this book. Lord, you know, it just went around. Man, I got it in the hotel. Where you fornicating at? Right. In the drawer. You ain't reading it. So you just thought, dude, since you go up, you already from preschool to kindergarten, already up to 12th grade, and then another four, five, more, six, four years of college, then when you get to the Word of God, oh, man, just, I just want to walk in. No, it don't work like that. It never has. The world don't work like that. You didn't set it up like that. So you should, that should not be your mindset. You got to study and get this thing. Amen. Come on, man. What verse are you at? 14. Go ahead. The Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. See, that's that chain of the darkness he got him on. Go ahead. Because he before this, he was able to walk up to you like that. That's why Jesus be tempted on all points. He was able to come and show Jesus and do all that. And he'll put him on the dock. You can have him. He's like, no matter me, like, nah, he's getting a chain of darkness about. But he still gets you in your mind. So you got the deception still there. He's still there in your mindset. So then you gotta recognize when he's there and able to deal with him and get him up over. They say he'll leave for a season. But he like they do in five. He gonna leave, but he'll be back again. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead, what verse is that? 15. Go ahead. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman, he said. I ain't giving her hugs. Because man said he gonna, he gonna work and he gonna have a hard time to work. We know that's facts. We be working, we be working like a dog. Getting crumbs too. But hey, this is this is our penalty. We had it sweet. But this is what happened. But go ahead, verse 16. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and and thy conception. He said, oh, you want all the time about a kid. Go ahead. In sorrow shalt thou bring forth children. So he let her know that you'll be hurt. It's going on to this day. It ain't sweet. And what else he said? And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Hey, this is what happened. Because what happened in there? Hey, me and Ruth. Be like, this woman, women trying to make a comment. Hey, ain't nothing going to happen. <laughs> I'm not trying to knock women. Women smart. But this is it. Tell me it ain't going to happen. Right. You believe in the word, that's what it is. That's why to this day, it's been man, man, six thousand years plus. And guess what? Man still rule. Hey, but the Lord put it there. That's part of the curse. It was on one playing field before that. Go ahead, finish that. 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Curse is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. And let you know that you're going to go home. You go home and you be lucky. You can just pay all your bills. I'm not going to even do that. Your paycheck be gone. You still got yourself to pay. Like, man. You're going to be sorry. It's not going to make no sense, man. It's going to be working like this. Like, God, you know. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> but that's just what it is. The ground curse. You ain't getting hardly nothing out of that. Be lucky to you pay your bills. Sometimes I'd be happy. I ain't got the dollar now, but at least my bills are paid. <laughs> Sometimes they ain't even that. You be scrambling. But go ahead. Thorns also, and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. That's what I check. Be like, be like, thorns, don't <laughs> Be like, thorn and thistle, man. I'm like, what is this? Thorn and thistles. I can't do nothing with this. But go ahead. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field, and the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. That's what happened. It happened a lot of times. You work all your life, I'm going I'm to I'm go ahead and retire and all that. You hear about all the time. They end up passing away. 
as soon as they stop working. Go ahead. For out of it was thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Man, that's a sad story, but that's fact. Let's go to John 8. John chapter 8. We're almost done. See? Wasn't that bad. Y'all like, yeah, right. <laughs> John 8, 44. Very good, brother. Go ahead. Ye are of your father, the devil. See, he's telling them. He's, he's dealing with the Pharisees and Sadducees. He's telling them. Ye are your father, the devil. But right now, we understand how they was operating, right? We know who they listen to, so that's why he said that. And what? And the lust of your father ye will do. Go ahead. He was a murderer from the beginning. They were trying to kill Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. So he told him, he said, the lust of your father, he was a murderer from the beginning, right? Why was well, he a murderer? Because he convinced Cain and killed his brother, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So he was a murderer from the beginning. And what? And abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. Go ahead. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. Yeah, that's what, that's what Cain said. Where your brother at? What did he say? He said, no, I don't know where he is. I'm on my brother's keeping. Let him know who he's riding with, but it's in the mind. Go ahead. For he is a liar and the father of you. Know, hey, 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 he's a father of because I'm a brother again. Creator of all this wicked and evilness. Let's go to Luke. We're almost done. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, and we're going to pick up at verse 17. Luke 10 and 17. As Jesus was sending the disciples out, and he was out there, they was healing and doing all this stuff. So let's see what's going on. Go ahead. 10 and 17. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto, this, unto us through thy name. And he said unto them. Because they was casting out those evil spirits like Jesus did. But what did he say unto them? I beheld Satan's lightning fall from heaven. That was doing the beginning we read, right? That's what happened when they got kicked out of heaven. Go ahead. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So he's saying, nothing going on is going to hurt you. You keep doing this word of God. You keep walking and doing what you're supposed to. He's going to take care of you. But what? Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not. That the spirits are subject unto you. Hey, because even if something do happen to you, he said, hey, he said, notwithstanding, don't rejoice because you can deal with the spirit, but what should you rejoice for? But rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Because that's what's important. <laughs> rejoice because your name is written in heaven. You got to make this thing. You got to get in the kingdom. You got to walk that walk. You got to overcome. Because, you know, they watching you and writing everything down. So you got to be on, on one accord. Let's go to Proverbs 15. This is it. Proverbs chapter 15. Pick it up at verse 1. Proverbs 15 and 1. Go ahead. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up pain. So yeah, that's what you, hey, if you want to do some stuff or you feel like you want to, or somebody offend you or whatever, hey, 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 have a soft answer. Some of your stuff will be the product. But go ahead. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools forth out foolishness. Hey, if you're flipping at the mouth, hey, this can get rough. You gotta keep this in mind. This is what's going on behind the scenes. So you, you have enough knowledge to know how to save yourself and what's going on. Go ahead. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. We read that, right? So they, they watching everything. Go ahead. Beholding the evil and the good. He's watching whether you're doing righteous or not. And they write everything down. Go ahead, finish that. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. So if you if you make sure you watch what you say and have a humble spirit, that's a tree of life. But what? But perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. So when you operate in that and you don't see what's going on and have the knowledge. 
how does it deal with that stuff? Hey, your spirit is off. So you got to make sure what's going on behind the scenes you prepare for it and you're able to deal with that. They are, the title of the lesson again, they are watching you. I mean, I thank y'all for y'all time.